Today our orders are to defend three hilltop locations and a road junction. Our forces are positioned near the villa in the middle of the map and on the peaks of the hills. The first of our strong points is Hilltop 104 in which two platoons defend along with two infantry guns. I hear heavy mortar fire and I try to determine what exactly is being shelled. It looks like the enemy is trying to shell out our locations on top of the mountains. Notably, they're trying to get rid of their AT guns and infantry guns on top of them. Soon after, all three of the strong points are shelled with our enemy artillery fire. However, shelling near the villa is relatively mild. On the other hand, point 104 is nearly overrun. I fear that this point is already lost in this battle. As you can see, both of the guns are suppressed and casualties are mounting up behind the hill. Soon enough, our guns actually bail out. So, this location is officially overrun. The only thing holding back the enemy is a platoon of infantry. Not a very formidable foe against the enemy tanks. Luckily, we still have guns near the back. I actually forgot to move some key elements of our force during deployment, so I had to hurriedly run them back towards our lines. Luckily, they didn't take too much fire, and we only suffered one or two losses. I used the new feature to move around the waypoints, since it's a little faster than cancelling and reassigning the orders. The enemy is still undetermined in terms of uh, location. However, they must be fairly close to the edge of the forest. And on hill 104, I try to get the crewmen back onto the guns. The crewmen just simply don't cooperate. Given the circumstances, it's fairly understandable. However, soon after the enemy advances with his mechanized forces, if I had the infantry gun operational, it would have been easily dispatched. It's a good thing that half-tracks are fairly vulnerable to bullets, and this Stuart tank right here doesn't pose much of a threat, seeing as I have two guns, one on this hill and another in a hidden location near the edge of the map position to take it out. I simply assign an order and boom! One of the new pieces of equipment available are canister shots, essentially a shotgun round for tanks. It's quite lethal for infantry. I try to use my gun position near the edge of the map to take out this armored steward tank. As you can see, it deployed smoke. I'm not sure if the gun can actually see it right now. It looks like we've lost contact with it. The enemy's assault is uh, fully underway. It looks like they've stopped their advance on point 104. For now, the point holds, simply due to a few handful of infantry. We don't have a lot of men. In total, we have roughly around two companies. However, we make up for this with heavy guns and mortars. I try to use this company or platoon HQ, I try to move them up to this ridge to call in mortar support. However, the commander is uncooperative, but for good reason. Overall, fighting near the villa has been fairly successful. Most tanks advance up the road only to be taken out by our channeling. AT guns, while infantry positioned on this stone wall have been able to successfully rout multiple enemy squads. If the enemy continues its current advance, they're probably going to bleed themselves dry. Most of the enemy armor will just simply be taken out uh, near this broken scout car. The half-track moving forward will most likely suffer the same fate due to our AT guns. Unless, of course, it's taken out by infantry fire first. As you can see, our AT gun here can't actually see this road all that well. I probably should have checked this beforehand. However, this comes with the benefit of uh, additional concealment. Obviously, our AT guns are a little more fragile than enemy tanks. 
ultimately the enemy will still lose quite a lot of vehicles down this road so I'm not that worried. In fact I'm going to automate this task. I'm going to use the new feature uh, using a cone of fire to only target enemy vehicles. This is really useful in these open battles where infantry and tanks are mixed together and you don't want your AT guns to be focusing infantry. A while later, the enemy tries to make a push onto point 104. I have a small force here set up just in case they try to do this. Sadly, they brought a enemy they brought a steward tank along with them. Now the steward tank actually fires a canister shot into my forces as you will see in a moment finishing them off. There's no real way to deal with enemy armor at the moment seeing as we do not have Panzer Shreks. So there's little to no way we can retake this point. Most of our troops here are autonomous as you can see they're not really doing much apart from uh, whatever they want to do. We still have a little force stationed near the houses. Here on the second strong point we still have two guns that are operational. Hopefully this point will make up for the loss of point 104. The guns here are in a slightly better position. The frontage isn't as bad, so hopefully this point will last a little longer. I doubt the enemy will be able to actually advance up to this point, seeing as both the left and the right flank are covered by additional forces. Here, we can see Overwatch from another point, and our mortars are firing in direct fire onto the enemy in point 104. The villa is still holding out. As you can see, most of the enemy is still being uh, routed into this little passage here. And our infantry positioned on this uh, little hedge to simply finish them off. It's a continuous process where the man in the front uh, says retreat and the man in the back says forward. Finally, the artillery barrage, uh, where the mortar fire comes down onto the little valley near point 104. Since the enemy is advancing in open terrain like this, uh, there isn't really much of a problem. Although the smoke given off by the mortars may ultimately prove uh, to be beneficial to the enemy, seeing as it does conceal them by a little bit. Overall, the front has been stabilized to this valley right here. The enemy hasn't really made a push past point 104. In general, without armored support, the infantry here just simply cannot advance forward. The German MG42s will just simply cut them down along with the mortars. Near the Villa Road, it's the same story. Without tank support, there's really no way they can advance forward. However, the enemy does try to make another push, and this is quickly repelled by my forces position here uh, on the other side of the valley. The troops are pretty much largely autonomous now. Eventually you can see a bunch of troops uh, helping out the dead, and this, uh, this is pretty much the end of the battle. Strong point number two managed to hold, although it did lose both of its guns. I mean, the ground is still there, so it doesn't really matter. This concludes this AAR. This is Pew Pew Choo Choo, and I'd like to know what you think of uh, this new, you know, AAR style. Uh, this is actually edited with Sony Vegas, something that I've been trying out. If you guys like it, I might as well buy a copy. Well, I hope to see you guys later on, so like the video and subscribe, and all of that good stuff. Bye-bye.